Welcome back to the Self-Esteem and Confidence Mindset Podcast with me, Johnny Pardo. Today, I have a very special guest on the episode with me where we're going to be talking about fulfillment. So welcome to the podcast, John. Hey, John. Johnny, it is fantastic to be here, brother. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to rocking the mic. Absolutely. We're going to create a very fire-filled podcast today. So... <laughs> As you always say, are you ready to ignite? So just an introduction to John before we get into the conversation. So John is the founder and host of the award-winning podcast, Entrepreneurs on Fire, with over 100 million listens of his 3,000 plus episodes. So his traditionally, his first traditionally published book, The Common Path to Uncommon Success, which I've got right by me great, great book, um, is the modern day version of the Think and Grow Rich with a revolutionary 17-step roadmap to financial freedom and fulfillment. So, John, my, my kind of first question really to get us started off today is your, your story is you, you're in a situation that you perhaps didn't enjoy as much as you, you would have liked in, a, in kind of your job and where you were. So, what really inspired you to start a podcast and kind of grow your business from there? I think a lot of people have heard of the phrase, scratch your own itch. And honestly, that's one of my biggest pieces of advice to entrepreneurs, because that's exactly what I did to answer your question. I mean, when you walk outside every single day, keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, look around. What problems are out there in the world that are annoying, are annoying to you, are annoying to other people, problems that you know that you can solve, and then discard most of them because you're not going to want to solve those problems. Like you're not going to want to figure out how to create a better line at Costco or Walmart or whatever convenience store you're at. But every now and then you might be like, now that's a problem I want to solve. And to rewind 10 years ago, pre-entrepreneurs on fire, I was walking around saying, man, I love, and I mean love listening to entrepreneurs. Uh, listening to interviews with successful entrepreneurs, hearing the stories of inspiring entrepreneurs, men, women, what they've done. It was just heaven to me. I was learning so much. I was getting so motivated, so inspired. But every single show that I found, and there's only a few of them, were releasing one episode per week. And it was just like, why? Like, why do I have to listen to an episode on Monday and then wait seven days for the next 20 minute interview? It's like, Come on, man. There's got to be a show out there that's releasing one of these value bombs seven days a week. Like that's what I need as this, you know, thirsty entrepreneur dying in the desert due to lack of value and knowledge and inspiration and motivation. So I said, hey, that show doesn't exist. Why, why shouldn't I just stop whining about it and do something about it? And so I said, I'm going to create the first daily podcast interviewing entrepreneurs. It's going to not be a good show because I'm going to be a poor host. I don't have any experience. Hopefully my guests that I bring on can add some value because I'm not going to be able to add any value, but it's a daily show. So every single day, hypothetically, I'm going to be getting a little bit better at my job, a little bit better interviewing, asking questions, doing the thing that interviewers have to do. And instead of my competition doing four episodes per month, like who gets better at anything doing four episodes per month or doing, doing a thing four times per month, I'm going to be doing that thing 30 days a month, 365 days per year. I'm going to get better fast because I'm going to put in the reps. And that's the story of Entrepreneurs on Fire because brother, here we are a decade later, 3,700 episodes later, well over a hundred million listens. And now the podcast is generating 3.2 million listens every single month because every day my audience knows there's an episode waiting for them on their walk, on their drive, for their workouts, you name it. Love it. Love it. You, you had the idea and you took action and it's just progressed from there. You've built up the skills and time um, as, as anyone does when they do more and more skill. And obviously look at an inspiration you are now and, uh, help people like me create our podcast. So thank you for all the work you're doing, John. We appreciate you. So one of my um, questions kind of following off that is you, you kind of had the idea, you took action, you implemented it. A lot of us 
get caught in this, oh, I need to be certain it's going to work. Or what if it doesn't work? What if it doesn't work? So what advice would you give to someone who perhaps is thinking about something, but they're getting a little bit stuck in their head? Maybe entrepreneurship isn't for you. Because guess what? Mm. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Not everybody's meant to be an entrepreneur. And those people that are, you can't breathe doing anything else. You can't fathom the idea of going to work for the same person in the same cubicle in the same office doing the same thing every single day. It would suffocate you. Some people love the fact that they can go to work, see the same people, get the benefits, have the security, get the paycheck. Listen, people are unique. People are different. So I like to say, know thyself and just straight up being an entrepreneur is not for everybody because it's scary. It's risky. It's unknown. It's jumping out of a plane without a parachute. And it's figuring things out as you go. I had no idea what podcasting was. No idea. I had listened to podcasts as a consumer, but I had never produced a podcast. I had never spoken to a microphone. I had never interviewed anybody before. I had never done any of those things. So it's, it's a scary proposition. And I'm not trying to scare people away. I'm just trying to tell you the reality. And if you're listening to this and being like, all right, bring it on. Okay. So maybe you do have what it takes then, you know, Mr. or Mrs. Listener in that case. And you just need to come in eyes wide open with the realization of one thing, Johnny, one thing. Can you deliver the number one solution to a real problem in this world? If the answer is yes, you are going to win because people will be the path to the doorstep of the number one solution to a real problem that they have. And they will ignore the second best solution to infinity. Nobody wants the second best brain surgeon. Nobody wants the second best fill in the blank. They want the best. And so when you're providing the best solution to an actual real problem, an actual real pain point, people will find their way to you. And that is my story. That's what I did. And I won't get into super details right now, but that's the reality. Look in the mirror and say, what I'm doing, what I'm doing in this entrepreneurial world is my solution, the best solution to a real problem in this world. And if it's not, that's okay. All that might mean is you just need to niche down one, two, three, maybe four times. I tell people in my podcast, on my book, whatever I say, listen, just write niche, it. Yeah. you're flipping face off, niche your flipping face off. Like everybody's scared of niching too low. There's no such thing. Like to get momentum and traction in this world is so hard and it's so much easier the more niche you get. Yeah. I mean, if you go out there saying I'm a life coach, how many other, you know, life coaches are out there? So I was reading that earlier, niche down so small that you got no competition. I think those were the words I read. Yeah. So loving it, loving it. So a um, couple of questions really um, left, but one of them was, obviously you talk about the role of mentors in your journey and consuming what they were consuming, um, whether you had met them or not. What was the role of a good community uh, and how did that help you in your journey? To me, a community was everything. So when I first started, I had a one-on-one -on -one mentor and that was great, but at the same time, it's like that mentor was already successful. They were there. I was, you know, paying them money, which they deserved. And so it was kind of more of like a transactional, like they were mentoring me and it was fantastic, but I had to combine that with something else. And that something else was a mastermind, was being part of a community. Mm -hmm. And that's when I joined a 10 person mastermind where I was part of a community now of people who are at all different stages, pre-launch, they had just launched, maybe they were one or two or three months into their podcast launch, but we were all podcasters. We were all having the same struggles, the same obstacles, the same mm -hmm. challenges. And we were there for each other. And it just made you feel so much less alone because if you let it, the entrepreneurial world is a lonely place. But the thing is, is there's a lot of people out there that feel that way. And so there's a lot of opportunity to connect, to form masterminds, to be part of communities. And it was a critical part of my journey. Mm, absolutely. No, and uh, I'm, I'm glad you shared that. It doesn't have to be as lonely as, as we think. And mm. what was, and how powerful did you find, and I'm always keen about this point, this, this kind of final one, is the power of investment and investing into yourself. Was that, was that something you found effective in your journey as well for developing you as an individual? 
I mean, my question to people is what better investment can you make than in mm -hmm. yourself? I mean, what better skills can you acquire than skills that you are going to be utilizing for your business, for your journey, for your life? And so for me, you know, I invest in myself in so many different ways in my health journey, in my wellness journey, in my financial journey, in my business journey, in my relationship journey, you know, I'm potentially going to, you know, go down the, the kid route at some point soon. And like, if I, you know, I'm lucky enough to have kids at some point then I'm going to invest in, you know, what is, how do I be a better father? Like, how do I learn those things? And so investing in yourself, every stage, every way, you know, to me is the absolute best use of your time, your energy, your finances, your bandwidth, period. Brilliant. Love it. And I love how you said across multiple areas, not just in your business, in your, your personal life and your financial, your relationships. So thank you for sharing that. So John, really appreciate you coming on today and giving a huge amount of value and a real small, you know, small, quick, snappy episode. Where can people find you if they want to find out more about your work, which I'm sure everyone wants to? All the magic happens at eofire.com. Uh, my podcast is Entrepreneurs on Fire. Check it out at any point. And Johnny, it was great hanging out today, brother. Yeah, absolutely. So thank you so much, John, for sharing some value. It's always great to have some uh, great guests on. So I know we've had a couple of similar guests as well. So uh, like Derek and uh, Peter as well. So oh, awesome. So that concludes our episode for today. But remember, work on your self-confidence every single day.